Court watchers tell us we are just hours away now from a verdict in a trial that has riveted many Americans and has entirely transfixed people across the pond. The case involves Nigella Lawson, a British celebrity chef and domestic goddess who, like Martha Stewart and Paula Deen before her, is now in reputational hot water. ABC's Lama Hassan takes us inside a courtroom showdown. Nigella. Celebrity chef Nigella Lawson has been on the hot seat for the past three weeks, front and center of a fraud trial that isn't even about her. A case that involves her beloved former assistants, accused of embezzling more than a million dollars of Nigella and her former husband's money. But a grilling in the courtroom has been spilling some dirty little secrets about the TV cook, forcing her to confess she had taken cocaine and, to use her words, smoked the odd joint. In court, Nigella found herself in the witness box as a key witness. <laughs> she strode in her five-inch heels, in her knee-high boots. She went in there meaning business. She physically rolled up her sleeves, gripped the witness box and gave her oratory. The daughter of a British politician, Nigella started as a restaurant critic 20 years ago. By 1998, she had published her first book, How to Eat. Having people around my table makes me really happy. And a year later, the TV show that made her famous, Nigella Bites. It's so easy and yet so perfect. But then, this summer, making headlines with these pictures, not quite domestic bliss, snapped at a London restaurant with her husband, 70-year-old ad mogul Charles Saatchi. Saatchi quickly brushed this off as a tiff. But their marriage soon started unraveling when her family's long-term personal assistants, sisters Francesca and Elisabetta Grillo, were accused of swindling the company credit card to the tune of over a million dollars. Saatchi alleged she was a drug user, dubbing her Hygella, saying in an email which was read out in court, you were so off your head on drugs that you allowed the sisters to spend whatever they liked, and yes, I believe every word they have said. Later, backtracking and claiming that he never saw any evidence of Nigella taking drugs, responding to that email which Saatchi had sent his ex-wife calling her Hygella, Saatchi said, quote, I was just being nasty. This isn't a very pleasant email, but I was very, very upset. Her reputation has also been on the line. I actually felt that from a branding point of view, this was someone who was showing confidence and showing a bit of British stiff upper lip sort of idea. She was going in as a woman in her own right, and I think that was a very powerful image in terms of TV image. For 10 hours, she chose to stand to give evidence spanning two days, refusing to sit for the whole duration. It was her kitchen. This is what she does. She directs, she tells people what she wants to, uh, them to hear. She stood and she was going to stand for the entire time it took for her to get her message across. How would you say she came across? Well, she stood up to give her evidence the whole time. She didn't sit down and she seemed very businesslike. She tried to project her voice, and she did a great job of that. And she seemed to connect with everyone who was asking her questions. Nigella accused her former husband of a witch hunt in an effort to save his reputation and savage hers. He said to me that if I didn't go back and clear his name, he would destroy me. I freed myself from a brilliant but brutal man. Then, adding fuel to the fire, her former assistants turned their back on her in court, claiming she lied about her cocaine use. Francesca Grillo testifying she saw Nigella with white powder around her nose. Numerous rolled-up banknotes covered in powder lying around the house. Although both sisters admitted they never actually saw Nigella doing drugs, just evidence of drug use in her home. This isn't the first time a legal proceeding tripped up a domestic Diane. Martha Stewart was charged with insider trading 10 years ago, after a six-week trial that turned into a media circus. What was a small personal matter became over the last two years an almost fatal circus event of unprecedented proportions. A jury found her guilty of lying to investigators. She served five months in federal prison, but after her release... Welcome to Martha's Cooking School. She went straight back to work, and her brand remains powerful.
A very different outcome for Paula Dean, the belle of Southern cooking. It's a little bigger than a tablespoon, but that's, that's a good start. Who faced accusations that she had used racial slurs when a former employee sued for racial and sexual discrimination. Her first apology offered on YouTube did not go well. I want to apologize to everybody. Uh, for the wrong that I've done. A judge tossed the racial bias part of the case and Dean settled the sexual discrimination charges. Thank you, darling. I love you. But the damage was done. The Food Network canceled Dean's show. She still retains a loyal following, but Dean lost more than $12 million in endorsements. Having people around my table makes me really happy. As for Nigella, the question is whether her cooking crown remains intact. It's really important in this case because the world is watching her and they're watching her to see, you know, do we still trust her? Can we trust this woman's reputation in terms of her brand? Now, I believe that so far, that what has been revealed in the, in, in the court proceedings, that this is a woman who has put forward her case from her point of view in a very clear way. So far, the court of public opinion seems to be in Nigella's favour. A recent poll for a British newspaper found that 39% had more sympathy for her than Saatchi. Even the prime minister of the country is declaring he is on Team Nigella. Speaking to The Spectator magazine, David Cameron was quoted as saying, I'm a massive fan. I'm also an amateur cook and I like her recipes. The judge asked the jury to disregard Cameron's comments. Nigella has surrounded herself with a close-knit circle of advisors called Team Cupcake. Saatchi ambled into court by himself, no one to consult with. He reportedly asked a stranger to rate his performance. Was I crap, he asked. A verdict is expected as early as tomorrow. So far, Team Cupcake seems to be coming out on top, but the proof, as they say, will be in the pudding. This is the new competition. Her next scheduled appearance is on ABC's The Taste early in the new year. So that way you get For Nightline, I'm Lama Hassan in London.